Now she's turning her attention to the world of children's literature with the release of her first book, Super Satya, Saves the Day. The story follows the precocious Indian American superhero girl who must face her fears, help her friends, and be the true hero everyone knows she is. Take a look. Everyone, please give a warm build brunch welcome to Rocky Mercandani. Thank you, thank you. This book is so cute, first of all. Oh, thank you. And I'm sure it was a journey to get to the final product. So what made you want to write this book? So I have a four-year-old daughter, and we love to read. We love to go to the book, uh, the bookstore, and I totally feel you on, like, just make the kids read. Right. It's fine. Books are great. Mm. Fantastic. And so we go to the bookstore. She has a great day. We celebrate with a book. You have a crappy day. You celebrate, you know, you make it better with a book. Yeah. And last year, um, it, I had a thought, and I was like, none of these girls really look like her in this mm -hmm. book, in any of the books. And once I had that thought, it was very hard to unthink it. Mm -hmm. And it drove me nuts. And so I wrote her a story. And she loved it, and she kept asking me for it. And finally, I thought maybe other kids would love the story, and it turns out they do. <laughs> and now it's a real book in the world that kids are taking to school, and like there's photos of them sleeping with it in their bed, and Aww. my head and heart are just exploding. That's so amazing. It's so sweet. Yeah. Did you think you'd be writing a children's book because your day job is so different? Yeah, I mean, I've been, <laughs> I've worked at the New York City tabloids. I now run a site for Dow Jones called Money-ish. And I've never written for children before, but writing for kids is, it's so fun. You can just kind of like have your brain work in this totally different way. And kids are so honest. So if they don't like it, they'll just be like, ugh, no, <laughs> which is super helpful. Because then you can just try another story, you right. know? Yeah, and like speaking of that and their honesty and feedback, what's the process like of writing a children's book and how do you develop that story? And so this book was a little bit different because I had an audience of one in my mind, right? Like, I just wanted to write this book for my daughter, Satya, who looks an awful lot like this. And I just really wanted her to feel seen, right? Because mm -hmm. when I was growing up, there were, there were hardly any books where the girls looked like me. And I didn't want her to live in that world. Mm -hmm. So I, I had an audience of one, and I read it to her, and then I read it to some of their friends. And there were parts that they were like, I, there was a part about a pigeon, and one of the kids was like, pigeons are gross. <laughs> I was like, scratch he, pigeon, insert he is dot. Not like, wrong. He not is wrong. Pigeons wrong. are disgusting. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't know. I yeah. know, yeah. you know, I was Rats like, with oh. Wings. Yeah, well, I that, don't know. I think disgusting. we need to rebrand pigeons. They're still cute birds, you guys. They need a publicist. Don't bully pigeons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just they need a good PR team, yeah. you know what I mean? Definitely. But he, he was like really upset. He was like, pigeons are gross. I was wow. Like, nice. wow, I would never have known that, <laughs> although maybe I should have. <laughs> so then we have a dog in the book instead. Oh, you, yeah, much yeah, yeah, much I don't know. You could have potentially changed the story for pigeons. You know? <laughs> no. The next one, next maybe. Next one, though, maybe it will be like my pro pigeon <laughs> yes. agenda. Oh, Shannon, Shannon, I think you're in a boat alone on that. Yeah, I will. I will fight for pigeons <laughs> all day long. I think that they got a bad rep. Um, but you know, we this year more than ever, I feel like people are talking about representation and the importance sure. of it. So, how much uh, did your personal life influence this story? Yeah, that's such a good question, and people keep saying this year, and I have to tell you that. This has mattered to me my whole life. Mm -hmm. I grew up in this skin, I grew up in this body. Like I have been wanted to be seen for 37 years and I was not gonna let my daughter go from four to 37 and feel like that. Mm -hmm. And none of the boys and girls who look like her, I, I just refuse to know that we were gonna continue to create, you know, our, our artists of all kinds, musicians, writers, whatever. And we weren't gonna see these kids. Right. We have to see these kids. They're going to change our world. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, that's so important. Yeah, it's so sweet. 
You're such a good mom. <laughs> she took, like, literally yeah. took it into your own hands. Yeah, my mom would never write, my write mom me never a book. My mom never wrote me a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't made her lunch in a really long time. <laughs> but um, you dedicate this book to your family, but as well as to um, the pediatric center patients that you've met along the way. Yeah. Why was that important to you? So my daughter um, had cancer when she was a baby. We spent some time on the oncology floor, and we were very lucky and very blessed to come out of it the way that we did. And so a lot of those kids and a lot of those families have become family for us. Mm -hmm. And so as part of our book tour, we're going to hospitals also in, and giving the books to kids and reading the books there. And it doesn't come up in the book, but there's a girl going down a slide who doesn't have any hair. Uh -huh. And she's just a love letter to all of our friends in the hospital. Oh, that's oh. great. For them to know that we, yeah. we see that. That's amazing. No, but even, even that little moment in the book, I think, goes a long way with teaching children and getting to understand. Exactly. That, that's a big, I just remember when I was a kid, not totally understanding why maybe another kid would not have any totally. hair. So. You know, things, and I yeah. think that kids are so smart. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes, as a parent, I feel like we have to, I have to be really heavy handed and I have to break down everything for her. She's really smart. Mm -hmm. She can figure yeah. things out. And I think sometimes if you offer characters that look a little different, they get it. You don't always have to unpack it for them, mm -hmm. but it's just part of their consciousness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that grows on to become part of the greater consciousness, I yeah. think. Totally. Also that superhero message then means a little more, especially for a child going yeah. through a trial. You know, that they can be their own superhero. And all kids and all adults go through trials yeah. every single day. Like I had a trial coming here, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, life can be like a, a grind yeah, sometimes. Exactly. And like for kids that can feel, it feels so large, right? Like the slide in this book feels so big to her. And every day, I think kids go through things like that. And they have all of the tools they need mm -hmm. inside. And I really hope that this book reminds them of that. I love that. That's really awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> well, we could probably talk to you for more. And more I time, love this show, you guys. I would encourage so everybody to go and check out uh, this book right now. It's Thank available now you. where books are sold. Yeah, and Amaz on Amazon. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.